being able to look at your haters, your doubters, the the naysayers, the people that didn't believe in you, all the stooges out there, and go and and, and even the prognosticators, and maybe we're a part of this, that the predictors, and maybe we're a part of this, and say you were completely wrong, and I stand on business. I stand on results. There's no argument here. Kevin Keats, take your rounds, right? Do you see uh, Kelly Oubre uh, for the the, the Sixers? Mm-hmm. They, they didn't like the way the game ended, the refs, and he walked up to the refs. There were three of them standing there, and, and he pointed at them each individually and went, you're a bleep, you're a bleep, you're a bleep. Kevin Keats should be able to go around to like Twitter uh, trolls, certain media people. Again, I'll I'll wear it. There were points in time we had s- complete segments on this show about does he have job security uh, if they don't win the ACC tournament, and and he should be able to walk up and go, "You were wrong. You were wrong." Point to each individual. You were wrong. You were way wrong. <laughs> you were super duper wrong. You were a little bit disrespectful and wrong. You were wrong. Like he should be able to do that. Bleep you, bleep yeah. you, you're cool, bleep you, yeah, I'm out. Exactly. <laughs> because uh, there was a lot of talk about his job. There was a lot of talk about his in-game management. There was a lot of talk about his ability to assemble a team, and now he is confident, he is paid, and he has job security. He just took down Duke for the second time to go to the Final Four. Kevin Keats was asked after the Elite Eight if this is his best coaching job yet. I've had some really good teams, and, you know, for us, I would say something about all of my teams are really special. These guys are so special. I, I think, what is it, nine now? Nine elimination games, or you go home. They're tremendous. Like, you ought to, you ought to see us every day. Uh, they make it easy for me to wake up every morning and, and come to practice and work hard with them because of who they are as personalities. I would say this, I've learned more basketball from these guys and I learned in my entire career um, because they know how to work they're great people they work hard and so and you know it's hard to say if it's my best you know you'd have to ask somebody else but I, I'm sure having a lot of fun with this group all right ask somebody else Dennis ask me <laughs> yes it's your best yeah 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 it is you took the 10th best team in the ACC in the regular season and you're in your final four you're in the final four I, I am completely aware that Coach Keats has done some good coaching in the past, that he's had good second half runs. Heck, he had one last year. Nice little second half run of the season, made it to the NCAA tournament. This ain't that. This is a level above that. This is better than that. And I think he is becoming a better coach because of it. Maybe it is the knowledge that this year is already a win, right? Like once you win the ACC tournament, uh, you get the the boost, you get the two year extension, you get the the raise. The players get their legacy. He's just pl- uh, coaching a little bit more free and loose, but he has a, a healthy amount of bleep it right now. We DJ Burns, DJ Burns played forty two minutes in a postseason game. We looked up some of DJ Burns' stats from earlier in his career. At Winthrop, he was scoring 10 points a game. He was playing 15 minutes. That was earlier in his career, right, when he was youthful and full of energy. That was like four years ago. He was playing 15 minutes. They couldn't play him more despite the fact he was shooting almost 60% from the field. Kevin Keats said, bleep it. I'm playing him 42 minutes in a postseason game. By the way, there's only 40 minutes in a college basketball game, so he played the equivalent of like – 106% 106% of, a, of a, 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 a game because he played in overtime. I say this about quarterbacks all the time. I love a quarterback that's been benched, that like a month later, whoever he was benched for gets hurt and he comes back into the game and he's like, what are you going to do to me? Right? I got. There's nothing you can say that I haven't heard. There's nothing you can do. What are you going to do? Bench me? It's happened. It's almost like all the rumors about his job security. And then he comes back and he and he gets to wave it in the face. He's like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna let it fly back here because you've already talked about my job. I've already won. I've already got this. He's you know who he is. He is Cleveland Browns Joe Flacco right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. He's right. Cle- He's like, I already got paid, right? Yeah. I've got my 120 million dollar contract from the Ravens. I've already got a Super Bowl. Like I've been benched. I've been out of the league. I was at home last week. Yeah, I'm gonna throw the ball to Amari Cooper and see what happens. Well, it's like Auntie Ronta. Look at locally, Carolina Hurricanes yep. got benched, set down in the minors. Frano comes back, plays strong alongside Spencer Martin. Then obviously there's no spot for him now. But during that stretch, when he came back, played 
Played all right. They're Played pretty a, good, actually. a healthy amount of bleep it in all three of those situations, and I think it's working for him. Right? I think it's working for him. Yeah, you know what? Let's try it. Hey, you know what? Middlebrooks has the hot hand. I'm playing him a bunch and telling him to cook on the post. Like, bleep it. <laughs> what are you going to do? Take my job? You can't. I've already proven that. And it, and it wasn't like you can't because I'm playing better and now I'm asking for more money or an extension. It's like you can't because there was a clause in my contract that said if I do this, I get a million or a half a million dollar raise, which he's done, uh, over two years, which or over the rest of his contract. So he's literally making millions. He has over a quarter million dollars in incentives. The team has won nine straight games in 19 days. What are you going to say to him? Yeah, he got a technical for walking out of the box. You know what he did? Went like, really? And walked back and kept coaching a great game. That is a confident and paid coach. Credit to him. And he should have the ability at some point in time in his career. And I know he won't because he seems like a really nice guy with really forward thinking. And he's and he's very like, you know, let bygones be bygones. But I hope if there's a press conference at some point in time where he, he does like the you and you and you and you and none of you predicted it right. That'd be kind of fun. The drive with Tim Donnelly, 99.9 The Fan. I was just thinking of uh, DJ Horns going double birds against Wake Forest. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe that's Keats, just to all, the, like all of should, us like, uh, who he, doubted it. He just posts that picture yeah. as, like, to everyone that doubted me. And it's a little picture of, of the, the, the double birds.